Hi, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Nick. And we're honored to be here on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil peoples. Welcome to the fifth and last episode of Views from Women in the Liver. Hi everyone, welcome to the final day of Women Deliver. This is the last video that we're going to be doing on Views from Women Deliver, and today we're focusing on youth, which is the theme of the day. So I'm Lindsay. And I'm Nick with the Canadian Council for International Cooperation. Thank you for joining us on this fifth episode. We're joined by two great guests that I'll ask to have introduced themselves. Uh, my name is Mesna. I'm one of the youth delegates for the YGE initiative with Plan International Canada. Hi, I'm Anne Delorme from ACOSC, the Quebec Association of NGOs, and we have a youth delegation here from Quebec, but also across Canada uh, with the ICN, which is the Intercouncil Network. And so, Mesna, we were talking before this a little bit, and, and you were saying the conference has been amazing, but really it's also about the work that, that led up to this point. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, we've had over 300 youth be part of this, uh, this process from, from all the dialogues that we hosted across the country. We had voices represented in, uh, in the Prairie Provinces, the West Coast, the East Coast, and the Territory. Um, so there's de so many different factors that came into this and then we were all grouped up in, in Ottawa for our writers conference to really just organize and refine um, you know, our findings um, you know, across the country. I think that was what really, really made this process, um, it really just made this whole initiative um, what it is today and what uh, has given us the opportunity to present it here at Women Delivering. Which is, if I believe, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first ever youth-led, youth -led, yes, Canada-wide uh, what is it, a roadmap for gender equality in Canada? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, if you were to look, if we had our roadmap here today, you would see you know, 64 beautiful recommendations for how um, the government of Canada, uh, municipal governments, or even at the individual level, you can impact Canada in, in working towards striding to a more gender equal nation. Yeah, that's amazing. And today really is the, about the power of youth. I think there's 1,400 youth delegates at the conference. And uh, you know, against the con you know, when you think about the context that globally there's half the world's population is under 33. I don't know if that still qualifies as youth, but they. <laughs> I hope you know, so. I hope. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Uh, and, and so you've brought a delegation in. What 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 has it been focusing on here? Your youth delegation. Well, similarly, it's representing civil society organizations that are working in international cooperation, and uh, the youth came together in advance to talk about different issues that we wanted to amplify here at the conference and beyond uh, Women Deliver. And the youth ended up choosing uh, a feminist approach to climate justice as their key messages. And we've actually had a series of asks that we've been sharing on social media, one per day. And they're pretty broad, like everything from asking Canada to take broader leadership on climate refugees so that they're recognized as, as refugees, to increasing the leadership of uh, women, and particularly indigenous women, from everything from climate change and adaptation programming, all the way to their ability to negotiate in international forum. That's amazing. And so, so what was the call today from, from the youth, do you, do you know? Uh, today, today's, uh, so there are, there were six, and today, if I'm not mistaken... Sorry to put you on the <laughs> Should have checked my social media before coming. Um, I believe today it's addressing the inequalities that uh, make it that climate change impacts women uh, and girls more than men and boys. That's so, great. so attacking the root, the root causes. And we were, we were also talking about this a little bit before as well, just thinking about, you know, this idea of over half the, the population being under 33 youth, myself mm -hmm. included, in that, in that definition. Um, and, and the idea of, like, really treating youth as experts and, and thinking about what is that expertise and what, what are, is the leadership of the future going to look like? How is that? Have you felt that here at the conference? Yeah, I think it... Um it really goes back to you can even look at it as like an, like an educational sense they always say you I mean you can you can take as many courses as you want and read as many textbooks as you want but it's not going to replace actually being there being on the front lines and experiencing it firsthand and that's something like myself and all the all the, all the youth delegates that are here today have and that's that experience and really knowing what it's like and so I think that's what really makes them experts and um, you know gives their that that kind of earns them that spot to, to share their voice and um, you know, their stories and experiences to work towards our common goal of reaching, you know, gender equality and achieving, you know. 
there's I mean, obviously one of the things I've been really getting from this conference and conference youth youth inclusion as well is just the importance of letting people speak for themselves yeah, yeah. and can you can you talk a little bit about how what made that possible through the processes that you went through like how what were the keys to letting youth express themselves effectively I think definitely um, setting the environment and having someone who represents the group leading that conversation um, it's really tough to have someone who's completely outside of the demographic you're reaching be the one that's leading change in that demographic you know what I mean it's um I think personally with with all the dialogues that we hosted um, one of the um, one of the suggestions is that you'd want to have, like, so it was the youth facilitator and the note taker, you want to have those people that kind of represent the people you're, you, you have participating in your dialogue. And so I think if you have that and you have um, you know, a, a, well, like, a well-developed cause and you just have people that are supporting them in anything that they need, um, you, know, you can get a lot out of any youth. And I think they're all willing to contribute to this cause and they all understand that it's important and beneficial to, to the world at a large. And they're just looking for that opportunity, looking for that one person to you know, put that microphone in their face and say, like, what do you got to say? You know? I think that's all it really is. Well, if I can jump in, uh, we had a workshop uh, two days ago on a feminist approach to climate justice that was youth, youth led. And so we had a lot of youth come in and what we decided to do is instead of doing a panel where, where people are being spoken at, and there's a lot of keynotes, there's a lot, a lot of panels going on at Women Deliver, we did a type of open space. We wanted to create space so that people could dialogue and talk about, like we're doing right now, like talk about what are the issues that youth feel are important that maybe could be more present in this conference or more present in the work that they do uh, in their organizations or in their communities. And one of the key uh, issues that kept coming back uh, again and again is intersectionality uh, and indigenous voices. So we, we, we see that youth are very concerned about breaking down those power relations, transforming those power relations that, that, uh, that, that are still very much present in Canada, but also internationally. When we talk about breaking barriers to access to power, or we talk, and really one of the bigger themes, I think, even behind the whole conference is inclusion. Mm -hmm. You know, what what are some of the recipes that we could be sharing out when we leave here around making sure that voices that have been marginalized come to the fore, that we can empower people as allies to give them voice when they should have it, and to support them when they don't feel they have it. I think. Um I think one of the most interesting things that has been brought up this week is that um, simply just like having, approaching people and telling them, oh, why don't you join this council or why don't you apply to this, you have this opportunity, we're opening that up. That's, that's not the case. That's not, that's not how it should be done because this is like society has made it for that these people felt like they were oppressed and that they had no chance. And so you can't just, you know, suddenly one morning say like, yeah, you can do this now. Like there's just been so many things that have push these people down into believing that not only do they not have the opportunity, but they're not capable of doing it. So I think um, if you're really looking towards inclusion and having people a part of something, I think you need to go down into the roots and understand why these people don't feel that they can be a part of it anymore and kind of just working your way up and just um, massaging them to the point where they feel comfortable enough and confident within themselves to apply and then supporting them from then on. Lindsay, you're, you're a journalist and you, you actually at the discourse have been working precisely on this. Um, yeah, I mean, this totally resonates with me in terms of listening and building trust with people and, and really rethinking. I mean, I wish some of the youth that, that we work with could be here today. They'd be much like I, I should trade places with them right now. But, um, you know, it's really for us as journalists about about thinking about how do we listen differently. And to your point, Anne, about like shifting the panel talk figuring out dialogues like we can't just assume that the way things have always been done is a way that we should continue to do them so for me as a journalist in, in our practice especially in the reporting we've done on the child welfare space we have heard over and over again that youth are excluded from that conversation not treated as experts in their own lived experience so we've tried to create paid opportunities for youth to contribute to the journalism and more of a skills exchange so we're not just taking and saying hey you know you've experienced X in your life tell me your whole story you know, well, that's one thing, but I think really moving on from this conference, the thing to take away is to say, 
let's let youth dictate what they want to tell you. If they want to tell you about their expertise on policy, like yes, lift that voice up. If they want to tell you about their personal experience, that's okay, but let's let's not just assume that that, that we're painting people with one brush in that way. Yeah. So. It's about learning how to listen differently. Yeah. And I think one of the challenges for many people in this space is not knowing what they don't know. And this mm -hmm. conference has been really helpful for that, I think, in creating champions that can go out. Um, what are some of the things that uh, you're going to go away with from this conference? Um, there's, there's a lot. I think you know, one of the things is looking at inclusion, with definitely with that different um, perspective, like I mentioned earlier. I think um, visiting all the different booths, there's so many different issues and problems in the world that you were never exposed to. So looking at all of those different things and just, um, there's just so many people from they have so many different experiences that I don't know. I'd want to like, you know, move forward with and, and work with, and that's something that we're kind of going to start looking at after in terms of like implementation and kind of spreading our idea and our our methodology with um, with this roadmap and seeing how that could apply to different countries and planting seeds. Because not only do we want to be the only country or the first country to achieve gender equality, but we also want the whole world to kind of catch up with us. And so I think planting those YGE seeds and you know, nurturing them, that'd be, that'd be a really cool next step. Yeah, it would be. I mean, we have to be champions when we leave from here, don't we? For sure. Well, I, I think we had champions before Women Deliver. And um, speaking for LACRC's membership, there's decades of experience working with women's movements, women's organizations, spe specifically in Francophone parts of the world, which aren't so present at this conference, quite frankly. And they will continue to do so, you know. Um, they, they, they will continue to work with feminist approaches and they will continue to be transforming uh, gender relations in their work. But I, I would like to see more emphasis come forward around different parts of the world, different people that don't speak English and therefore aren't present in these kinds of forums and, and creating more opportunities so that Francophones, Hispanophones can speak and their expertise can be heard uh, and their voices can be amplified as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like I feel like when as we're imagining, you know, the women deliver of the future, uh, you know, who who knows what it could look like, but I, I'd be really curious what women deliver would look like if the whole thing was really organized and mobilized by youth. So that's my my hope to see in the future. Well, let's see if we see that. Um, certainly we're gonna be leaving here with a lot of lessons uh, from Women Deliver. Um, a lot of personal lessons, a lot of program level lessons, a lot of lessons around how to advocate for change. Um, we've seen some big change at, announced at the conference, mm -hmm. but clearly it's not enough. There's so much more to do. And so the 8,000 delegates here are going to leave and hopefully be major agents of change around the globe. So thank you very much for joining us for this last episode. And thank you, our audience, for listening to us these five days. We hope it's been useful to you and see you around.